The news with Gina Grad. Well, we did discuss this, but just to give you a detail or two, if you're interested, singer Eddie Money, of course, Officer Mahoney, the money man, the man with no control. Uh, he, of course, was famous for two tickets to paradise. Take me home tonight. Baby, hold on. He did die at the age of 70 on Friday, stage four esophageal cancer. Uh, money said recently he discovered he had cancer after what he thought was a routine checkup. Rock legend learned that the disease had spread to his liver and lymph nodes. Uh, he said that he had numerous health he did have numerous health problems recently, including heart valve surgery earlier this year, pneumonia after the procedure, uh, leading to his cancellation of a planned summer tour. All right. Everyone here has kids or sort of has kids in different, <laughs> in different stages and ranges and ages. Let's, uh, since it's uh, Pops Corolla's birthday, uh-huh. let's see if we can, uh, what, let's see if we can figure out wishes. Uh, Eddie, oh, yeah. Eddie Money made it to 70. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pop Scarola, maybe 90. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my Eddie's. God. We never been able to, He doesn't have like an IMDb page or anything, <laughs> does he? You kind of bubble to count the rings? Yeah. No wiki. All right. My dad is going to outlive Eddie Money by at least 20 years. That much is true. <laughs> he has had not a tortured or miserable life, but... Um, Stagnant. There's a John Hyatt song where he bellows into the mic, I can't even prove that I'm alive. And I don't know that my dad could prove he was alive. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I've always said death will be a lateral move yeah. for my dad. So now we all have young people. Uh, I, will, uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will up the ante. Would you rather have your child go at age 60... Pretty young these days, living an Eddie Money type life. And I don't mean women and broads and booze. I just mean up on stage, doing your thing, wowing the crowd, mm-hmm. highs and lows, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, hearing your song on the radio for the first time mm-hmm. after being a cop or in New York or whatever, or slow and steady <laughs> loses the race, like my slow dad. Slow and steady into the grave. Uh, yeah, just kind of. Low impact, right. but but a lot of years, a lot of lot of, you know, thirty more years, yeah. thirty more years of whatever you know, playing a trumpet or reading a book or eating, watching sports, eating cottage cheese, eating cottage cheese raisins. with some raisins spreading in there. That's disgusting. What? Uh, well, it depends. What do you think? It depends on if I'm dead yet. I don't want my kid dying before I do. Let him suffer. Right. No. I've said this many times. No child should have to bury a parent. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> No, I did that on stage once. It was total, it was total silence. It was like, it was just, I was like, my friend is pretty down in the dumps today because his mom died on Saturday and uh, it was rough. He was pretty broken up. No, no son, no son should ever have to bury a parent. (laughs) And the ice house was literally, there was no sound. They weren't laughing. They weren't doing anything. Everyone was just looking at me. That's all. It was a look. And I guarantee you did the joke again another time. <laughs> One more, and then yeah. I was like, fuck it. I'm tired of torturing myself. <laughs> it's a stupid what? joke. One you guy? ever get a joke, though, that bombs like that, and you love it, and you just keep doing it, thinking, they're going to get it's it. It's going to click. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done that a few times, and I, eventually I've just jumped jumped out of the gondola. One guy in the back. Right. <laughs> All right, so what do we think for your kid? 60 or 90? The 90 life's not brutal or anything. It's just yeah. they, there's not, no one even knew they were alive yeah. kind of thing. Like, I, then I, I spent more time thinking about this than the average person. And yeah, Why? Mm-hmm. it's close. And of course, the extra time is precious. But 60 great years over 90 meh years. Well, yes. keep, keep in mind, they're not going to be great years. You, there's you going to be the, ups and downs. No, I, you're right. Sorry. 60 years of highs and lows. Tasting and living. Yeah, yeah living. As in any money life. You know yeah, what I mean? That's, right. That's I mean, he, I'm sure I'm he, sure it wasn't all great. No, he dropped. He probably dropped an album in 2009. It got no attention, mm-hmm. and he was busted up about it sure or not happy rehab. about it or, or whatever. Right. But, oh. yes, I, I'm with you. I'll go with that. So. Well, Yes, I'm 53, (laughs) and I've had an Eddie Money kind of a life. I've had ups and downs. I've had people approach me for autographs every two or three days, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm ready to wrap it up. 
Oh, wow. I wasn't <laughs> so, I mean, expecting I, that. I'd make it 53 for my kids. 53 All right. We'll go, great we'll, years. We'll roll it down. Yeah, I think we're going to go uh, around the world on this one. As much as, I, like Brian said, every day is precious and how dare you wish for less, mm-hmm. I would much rather have somebody that I love experience the highs and the passion and the and yeah. the and and all of the feelings like, are just kind of, you know. Uh, Gina, you know that song about linear. never being to me? Oh, it's Char- Charlene? Charlene. Oh, I've been to Georgia and California and anywhere I could run. I took the hand of a preacher man and we made love in the sun. I've been undressed by kings and I've seen some things that a woman ain't supposed to <laughs> so see. So far, I'm counting two rapes in this song. <laughs> I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. Hey, poem. Wait. You know what paradise is? Mm. It's a lie, a lie we create about people and places as we'd like them to be. But you know what truth is? It's that little baby you're holding in your arms, and that man you fought with this morning, the same one you're gonna make love to tonight. That's love. That's truth. Sometimes I've been to crying for. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you off in okay. 20 minutes. No problem. No, but I, Wait, you got a little more time. Not, there's yeah. nothing like makeup sex with a black <laughs> eye. And that's <laughs> <laughs> Gina, it was a yes or no question. Do you know the song? <laughs> I've heard it like four times, yeah. I love that that's her uh, Niagara Falls thing, where it's like yeah. we, we, we could be at a funeral service, and, and they could be delivering a eulogy, and we could be in the pews in the back, and I could go, Gina, remember that song? And she'd just have to go, shit, and she'd have to go right into it. I took the sweet laugh, but never knew <laughs> right, I'd be bitter from and looking the at sweet Do yeah. I know it? It'd be like calling, hey, Kool-Aid. Hey, Gina. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember that song? <laughs> Wherever you were. You'd have to do it. Hey, Dr. Drew. Huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See the feelings about it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. He'll be missed, is what we're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and arre- Ooh, sometimes I do. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> An arrest warrant was issued for R. Kelly on Thursday after he failed to appear at a hearing in Minnesota. But hold on. This one wasn't on him. Kelly was unable to make the court date because he was locked up in a Chicago prison when he failed to show up at Hennepin County Court, where he was facing charges for engaging in prostitution with someone younger than 18 and hiring, offering, agreeing to hire someone for sexual content. The judge issued a bench warrant. Kelly's lawyer, Steve Greenberg, told told TMZ, they never came to get him. What the F was he supposed to do? Telepathically transport himself? This Mm. is the sort of incarceration version of every once in a while, there'll be the guy going, I didn't murder that hooker. I was at home cooking meth in my bathtub. (laughs) Like every once in a while, guys, because I was involved with another crime that's not as bad. How could I have been doing that? I got a tight alibi. Right. Yeah, I was. I yeah, I wasn't in your jail because I was in someone else's jail. Come yeah. on now. No, it's not his fault. I'm not Doctor Bombay. <laughs> I didn't kill my wife. I was out cheating on her. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> CNBC reports that after the deaths of six people and dozens of others sickened, the Trump administration is planning to ban flavored e-cigarettes, according to Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. The FDA is now finalizing guidelines to ban all flavored e-cigs from the marketplace within the next 30 days. Wow. The makers of e-cigarettes may be able to bring those flavors back, but they have to submit an application and they have to get approval from the FDA. Uh, they are calling this vaping, you know, all the underage vaping an epidemic with companies such as Juul taking heat for targeting children with the sweet flavors and the mangoes and the creams. Well, how, you know, if you think about nicotine gives you a charge and with the kids, with the Starbucks all over the place and the and the monster energy drinks and Red Bull and everything, how how were we to avoid this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and they're ev- on Ritalin. <clears throat> right. Oh. Everyone's everyone's all sped up. When I was young, the notion of drinking any coffee-based anything without the you know occasional coffee ice cream, but I mean, like there was no coffee-based anything when you were thirteen. That's what I was like, gonna that, that was for other people. Did anyone drink coffee in high school? I didn't. That no, was for not adults. Until college. Yeah. No. Although no. we drank Coke like regularly. Remember two liter fucking things of Coke in your house? Dinner, oh, lunch, school, slam it. after school, all we did was drink Coke. Yeah, we didn't get any of that. We had the occasional Shasta. <laughs> but we. So now everyone's sort of weaned on stimulants. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's the prescription grade stuff, and then there's just the Starbucks all the time, mm-hmm. and then there's the energy drinks all the time, yeah. and th- this is just another stimulant. 
You know, my feeling is for people who are trying to quit cigarettes, it's a good thing, like a nicotine patch. Like a step down. But I don't know that we need flavors no. for them. That's... Adults don't want mango cream nicotine. Right. So, and I don't like to be like the man, like outlaw this and outlaw that. But th- I, I, my feeling is... Uh, vaping is good if you're doing it in place of cigarettes. Vaping's not good if you're 14 and just picking up right. vaping. But on the other hand, <laughs> um, we are going to have to start teaching our kids that between all the shit on the Internet, all the hateful stuff on the Internet, all the porn on the Internet, all the, hey, you want to see a Jordanian pilot burn in a cage by Al-Qaeda? Go ahead and watch it on the Internet. We're... With all the fast foods, 24-7, Grubhub, drive throughs you know, forget about one flavor of Gatorade, 6,000 flavors of Gatorade. You're going to have to start policing yourself. Like, everyone's just going to have to start policing yourself. Like, you, you could go, well, get that off the shelf. Okay, now there's 7,000 energy right. drinks the kid could reach for. They're going to get the 5150 <laughs> loco in a 22 ouncer and drink that with 7,000 grams of sugar. Like, I, it, it is just a world filled with temptation. And the kids, look, temptation of playing Fortnite for eight hours straight instead of getting out and throwing the ball with the dog or whatever it is. It's 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 on. It's on us. I think as adults, we've all figured out that we pass by the Taco Bell or the In-N-Out Burger and we have to kind of keep driving. There's that impulse, that temptation. of like, oh, shit, I should I should slide in yeah. there. And the, I'll just call Grubhub and have him bring it back. Like, we're constantly, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I feel like I'm constantly, like, saying no to myself. Being tested. Money is obviously not an issue when it comes to Taco Bell. It's not a barrier to entry. It's a, it's a constant self-policing. Taco Bell used to close. Places used to not be open on Sunday. No one would bring all this shit to your house. They only offered three meals. Yeah, right. I was just, they, they, they invented in between. fourth meal. Right. <laughs> That's right. part of their campaign. So this, there wasn't, if you were feeling a little lackluster, then you'd have to take some cold water and slap it in your face and go, you know, come on, say your name into the mirror, get it together. Here we go. Or whatever, run in place or, you know, shadow box for a couple of beats and get the, get the juices flowing. Or wait now, for your radio partner to yell at you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'll now, snap you, you out. now you got to reach. Now we're going to synthesize it. We're going to reach for something mm-hmm. that's filled with uh, chemicals. Yeah. We're going to put. Listen, everyone. Whether it's the internet, whether it's pornography, whether it's fast food, whether it's energy drinks, vaping, whatever, pot legal, everything legal, accessible, whatever. Everyone's going to start policing themselves. It, the, the, the notion of doing it, sort of, um, I. I uh, a la carte is not going to work. Like, I'm going to, we should teach our kids, police yourself. Not, this is bad. Oh, and that's bad. Oh, and then that, that's bad. That's what the government yeah. tries to do. Get doesn't, your compass working. Doesn't your really work. Compass. Yeah, get your inner compass working. And, right. And, right. See that, Drew? <laughs> He's a doctor. He agrees. That's right. So on September 12th, the UK's Department of Transport Air Accidents Investigation Branch, they're the AAIB, revealed in a new report that a Condor Airlines flight from Germany to Mexico in February was forced to make an emergency landing after the pilot's coffee spilled all over the control panel. Oh. And they had to land See in that? another More country. Yep. Mm-hmm. The splatter caused an immediate malfunction with the device burning so hot that one of the buttons started to melt. Ultimately, the aviator was diverted to Ireland for a small small amount of smoke that filled the cockpit. Uh, February 6th, 49-year-old pilot placed his lidless cup of coffee on a tray table in the cockpit, and the drink was knocked over onto the first audio control panel. This is a German man? I don't see this coming. Uh, well, UK. They were going from Germany no, to No, no, but he, it's, it's a German airline oh, yeah, coming okay. from Germany. So. In response, the pilot quickly diverted to Shannon, Ireland as a precaution. The flight crew used supplementary oxygen. One pilot was uh, kept on oxygen at all times. The flight went on to land with no issue. None of the passengers or crew had you know bad injuries, um, even with the smoke fumes. But yeah, coffee melted the buttons mm. while he was flying. Got to go to Ireland. That's where all the firemen are. Yeah. <laughs> Seems now, like now they are. Yeah, I you gotta see backdraft. Uh-huh. The thing about you think this would happen more often with yeah. all those guys up there and all the cough, and oh, also God. in a world of regulation, uh, 
I feel like there should be a sippy cup for yeah. the for those guys up there. Yeah, it's, it's, you're literally yeah. just surrounded by heated wires and yeah. switches. Tesla is the one you screw the top on. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you can drink from any angle. Destructible. Those are great. Yeah, yeah. I got a. I was on a flight the other day, and this uh, a guy get a coffee, and, <laughs> and I'm on the window seat, and the stewardess hands me flight attendant yeah. mm-hmm. hands me a cup of coffee to the rim. To the right, handing it over yes. to other people, steaming hot, yeah. not even room for cream. I'm like, hey, take it easy. Right. What happened to the half cup on the plane? I can get another one. Yeah. <laughs> he I know can't get are. another bo- set of balls. That's true. Yeah, it's very, we have an interesting love hate with spillage and. and and if anyone, you know, you ever order a martini, that's just that, that yeah. cup travels 180 feet across yeah. the steakhouse with it just at the top. And I'm just staring at it. Go, easy, easy. And sometimes they're up on the shoulder. I always, if I order coffee from Starbucks and they go room for cream, I go no, even though I'm going to put cream in it because they short you. I feel like they're, they give you too mm-hmm. much. They, you don't need an inch and a half for cream. You need a quarter oh, no. inch for cream. But on an airplane, yeah, sure. No, there it was up. a meeting. There was a corporate meeting where some genius who got his MBA from Harvard said, start asking room for cream. We'll mm-hmm. save 7% yep. per cup. Yep. Every every piece of plywood you buy is not three quarters thick. It's eleven sixteenths thick because somebody figured out if we take a sixteenth off of this plywood, every ten or eleven every, units, no, every we'll, sixteen units, we'll have. Well, not even. Yeah, well, or eleven because it's eleven sixteenths. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll get a new sheet but every if you, eleven. If, you, if, if you're shortening it by one sixteenth. 16 16th will be one full sheet, run it? No, that that's what I'm saying. It's 11 16 Right. The sheet's 11 16 thick. Oh, so every it's 11 sheet. Okay, yeah, right. you're right. Yeah. Right. So if you say, okay, so if you're Starbucks and you have 2 million uh, mm-hmm. outlets, franchisees, and you can knock off 5 eighths of an inch of mm-hmm. coffee, which would be, you know, Eight percent off of every cup, or even eleven percent, or something. Like if you just go, we'll just ask if room for cream. All right, we're being polite. Times a million no, units. That's right. By the way, room for cream, great porn title. Oh, yeah, uh, nice. Mm-hmm. Coming to this Thank Starbucks you. often. <laughs> Greg I mentioned uh, um, the, uh, you know, spelling coffee, hot coffee, uh, uh, new set of balls. Hot, documentary recommendation if you haven't seen it. Hot, hot coffee. coffee. Great documentary streaming on Amazon Prime about so the McDonald's have, coffee. About, right? Remember yeah. back in the yeah. 90s, it was mm-hmm. a big like late night joke meme like, oh, a woman was sued so McDonald's lady, yeah. because uh, her coffee was too hot and she spilled it on herself. Right. That was a master. That that is that they should teach. They do teach that in PR classes because the way they spun that that woman, that old woman, was scalded. She had horrible burns on her legs because McDonald's was as a practice corporate. Uh, was brewing their coffee too hot to keep it fresh longer. So if they're uh-huh. supposed to brew it at 120, let's just say, they're brewing it like 180 because it would last longer. And mm. this woman scalded herself when they spilled coffee on her. Do you think mm. it was difficult in court uh, to prove when she showed pictures of her 82-year-old vagina that that's what it looked like because of the hot coffee? <laughs> they showed those or pictures in the just- dock. <laughs> Really? No, they did. They did it. No. They have, you've seen it, Gina. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I haven't seen it for years. It came out, what, a decade Speaking ago? Speaking of flying, it may be the only time in a courtroom where they handed out air sick bags. <laughs> like, they're, okay. You, what you, do we do? Yeah, so I was in Vietnam. I mean, keep keep the bag anyway. I, I saw. I lost a lot of brothers. I, you just keep. I held a man in my arms when he died. Here's the bag. You don't have to use it. You don't have yeah, to thank us. Have that you ever seen unused. a bouncing Betty and what that can do? To, just, I'm going to drop the bag off. We've already gone too far on this. <laughs> I had a man die in my arms. <laughs> <sighs> So a day after American Airlines confirmed it will relinquish naming rights to the arena where the Miami Heat play, a popular online porn site claims they have submitted a bid of their own. Room for Kareem Marina? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they always do this. They they have they, a way around it. They There is a I way know, to make this work. All right. I hope I hope they mean it because there's oh, the porn sites will always yeah. do that thing Good where publicity. it's free porn on Father's Day or something that they're doing something like that where yeah. they really they can't. Can they afford this arena? Well, Bang Bros announced on Twitter that a ten million dollar bid to rename the arena Bang Bros Center 
would be they'd be allowed they would be allowed to shorten it to the BBC so no one would ever have to know they even purchased bangbrocenter.com just what in does case. BBC stand for <laughs> oh the British Broadcasting <laughs> Company according to the porn company it doesn't get much more Miami than having the arena sponsored by Bang Bros how yeah. much do those companies make like oh. I don't know you porn and whatever and they're fisting and they're <laughs> and they make money through all the Pop up ads or something? That is a good question. Fitz I mean, dog, you watch, power yeah. users like Rick <laughs> watch porn. It's free, right? I've never signed up for anything because all my shit goes through Tony Reed's office, <laughs> and so like they just get the bills and the stuff, and it would all like end up there. But I've been Adam, on the site. Something called BBC. <laughs> yes, I had a friend send me a a link to some porn the other day, which is like. It's so is weird to have a yeah. guy send yes. you a link. It's like, hey, Matt, want to jerk off to the same thing <laughs> I just spanked it to? Or yeah. saw this and thought of you. And, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when we see each other, we can talk about yeah. what we both masturbated to. Yeah. And so, so I open it. Yeah, smell and, my uh, belly. Yeah, go ahead. Bro. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So I open the link, and I guess his computer must have had, like, spamware on it, and mine didn't. Because when I opened it, it started launching... Page after page yeah. after page, you know, where they just keep you. popping yeah. up, and you try to close them, and when you hit the X, it opens three more, right. and and, it, and and so I slammed, I slammed my computer <laughs> shut, and I waited, I waited like three minutes, as if like the virus was like, I think you left, I guess we'll head out, and so and then I open it up again, and there's an eight hundred number underneath it, yeah, yeah, and it, like a fucking. Idiot. Yeah. I call it. You call I it. I call it. And this guy answers and he sounds like he's in some like Chinese warehouse and he's like, <laughs> Apple computers. And I go, This isn't Apple computer. <laughs> he goes, Yeah, you give me your credit card. I fix, I make the computer. Make it all go away. And I was like, Fuck you. So I hang up and, uh, and then I call the real Apple. And of course, I get a woman answering. Of and yeah. she's like, what's, what's going on? I go, I got a virus. And she goes, How did you get it? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, well, I got to get access to your screen so I can see what's going on. I was like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I sent the material. And so she goes, you have to. That's the only way we can fix it. And so I can give I talk her to your access. Supervisor? <laughs> and she, she gives me access. I give her access. And she doesn't say anything. She just makes this noise. She just goes like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then she like downloads some malware and we, <clears throat> we fix it up. It takes like five, ten minutes excruciating, uncomfortable. And then at the end of it, usually when you talk to a big company like Apple, you can't get them off the phone at the end. It's like, mm-hmm. and is there anything else we can help right. you with? And do you mind sticking around for a second? None of that shit. She just goes, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm curious. Like, I get the ads that pop up that go like, single women ready to have sex in, in your neighborhood, like six minutes away. Like, I have no idea how any of that works. But the one that always stymies me is the tired of beating off alone it's like well evidently not because <laughs> <laughs> there are things i'm I'm tired of telling my daughter to shut the fucking ceiling fan off in her bedroom when she leaves her school but beating off alone no nah, cool. that's kind of my thing I'm just warm it up. yeah and by the way i it's like saying tired of eating a tuna sandwich by yourself like n- you no know, i i'd be weird just, if someone was right eating amount. it with me at yeah. the same time yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. i i like Beating off alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, number one, <clears throat> yeah, I want famously, I haven't told the story in a million years, but when I was like 23, I went to the local whatever and rented a porn. And there's a porn that was called, I think it was called Bobby Hollander. Bobby Hollander was like some, I don't know, director or something, producer or something. It's like presents. It was like Bobby Hollander's porn bloopers oh and i was like well, this is my uh, reese's yeah. peanut butter cup <laughs> yeah. because i love porn and i got a sense of humor so i rented bobby hollander's <laughs> porn bloopers and it was just stupid it wasn't it wasn't anything it wasn't funny it wasn't sexy it wasn't anything mm-hmm. and i was going to return it and i didn't have a credit card or anything and it was like the problem is, is you would go to the regular video store that was, you know, Swiss Family Robinson was two shelves over. You know, like they were regular. The regular yeah. people went there. They had the little weird. Did it cur- have a? Did it have a curtain separating the? Oh, there you go. Ron yeah, Jeremy, of probably course. beads or something. There, uh, there, there would be beads. There would be curtain curtains. My favorite one was this little one that was like off a of foothill. Had Western 
Uh, saloon doors? Saloon doors. Yeah, and I always yeah. want to come in like, there's a new loser <laughs> sheriff in town, boys. <laughs> Clear out of the Asian busty section. I'm aiming to beat off. <laughs> Another guy turns around, you square off, take three paces from each other. <laughs> there's not enough him. room. In the, a, this dick's not big enough for both of us. <laughs> not enough room in the ebony, ebony section for the two of us. <laughs> now draw. Now draw. <laughs> <laughs> Old women crying. <laughs> yeah, looking out the window. So I go in there and I'm like, oh, I got to return this porn. Like, I hope it's like a fat old dude, like behind that counter. You have to get in line and kind of tuck it in your arm. And also, I realized uh, this is kind of pre ATM. And I had no credit card. And I pre asked him out? I don't have, <laughs> I don't <Right>. have any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have – that is a section. I don't have any cash, and in my truck is like the change, you know, in the ashtray. I cobble together like a buck seventy-five to pay for the thing, but it's all like nickels and dimes. And, stuff like that. and as I get to the counter, it's revealed to me that a cute chick who was in my graduating class no. at North Hollywood High is working behind the counter. It's like, Adam, how's it going? It's like, <laughs> you tell well, me. Yeah, evidently. <laughs> Real well. I'm going to pay for this pornography with change now. What are you up to? Well, not a lot. Not a lot. How's it going? Like, Adam, are you tired of beating off by yourself? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'm always. That was the other one. And the other one that would come, they'd have the 800 numbers at the end. But at, at the movies you would rent at the top, they'd have the hot chick, mm. and she'd be wanting you to call her. Mm-hmm. You know, with the mm. sex line number. And there was a couple of them. Sometimes they just have the hot chick. But sometimes the hot chick would be sucking dick. And she'd be like blowing a guy who wasn't like they didn't have his face or anything. She'd just be like blowing a guy. And she'd like look up. And she'd go, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Call me. And I'm like, I'm not going to call you. You look busy. You Whose dick you sucking, bitch? Like, I thought we had a relationship. Like It was like it's a weird thing. Like I get it. It's sexy and yeah. stuff. But if you do the yeah. math. Like she was like, oh, I was just sucking this guy's dick, but you should call me. Yeah, I'm, you're a great I'm not, multitasker. Yeah, I you call you. her and it goes straight to voicemail. Sorry, I'm busy right now. <laughs> I'm sucking this dude's dick. <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> Max Battis, see if you can find one of those sucking dick, talking, t- break, fourth wall sucking dick, breaking, breaking the fourth wall down while I'm sucking dick ones. I, I again, I like I like where her head was at. I kind of dug the spirit of yeah. it, yeah. but it was also flying in the face of you being my best girl. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's not a prom date. This is the worst Sadie Hawkins dance ever. <laughs> All right, Gina, what else we got? Well, South Park has been renewed for three seasons, which will push the long-running animated series. Any guesses to over how many episodes? At the end of three? Mm-hmm. Oh, how many episodes? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to, I was thinking seasons. No, God, I, remember, I can't even. I remember it debuted when I was in college. It was a phenomenon. We mm-hmm. had, it was, it, was, sure it was. was appointment Beef feeling. Beefcake. It was about 97, 98, somewhere around there. So, so yeah. So what, 20 years? It'll push it over how many episodes? 20 times 20-something. Well, it's got to be 25 or 30 times to do 22 episodes I'm going to say year? 500. No. I'm going to say 500. I, I'm going to – they don't do 22 episodes. I don't think so, no. I'm, I'm going to go four – I'm just going to go 400. 600. <laughs> the, it'll push it over the slightly less impressive now 300 episodes. Oh, that's not big so they do, they do 10. <laughs> they do 10 a season. Oh, they just oh. do 10. Yeah. Oh. The 30-episode renewal, which comes two weeks before the premiere of the 23rd season, will take the longest-running wow. primetime scripted series in cable through a record 26th season. South Park has been the highest-rated cable comedy in primetime for six years, according to Deadline. And Stone joked to The Hollywood Reporter that South Park and Dave Chappelle are grandfathered out of cancel culture, which I think he's dead on about, about that. Yes. You you establish well, – anyone can, and we can do it as a society, too. You just everyone say what they want and never apologize and never, never back po- down. Never apologize. And it'll swing, it'll swing back the other way. I, I was talking to Drew about this, and he's constantly, you know – 
when he is here and when he is awake and when he is using the microphone, he's going, when, when's it going to swing back? I said, look, once we get to the saturation point where everyone just gets filled up, where, where the people that are the most woke, like Sarah Silverman, are getting canceled, then the pendulum will swing back. And he, he's been saying to me for five years, when's this going to happen? And I said, with Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. It just happened. It just started. The Dave Chappelle thing just started the swing back toward fuck it. We're saying what we want. We're comedians. You, you got to see Bill Burr's special, right? So. And Bill Burr. Awesome. That's oh. all part of it. It's all and right. and the roast will be part of it. It's all. It's coming back. I don't know if it's in your news, Gina, but uh, the SNL was in the news yep. because they hired a, a new cast member. Uh-huh. I think you meant of the DS Gillis. Pro- uh, I forgot his first name. Anyway, the cast member, and of course, footage resurfaced of him, him saying chinks on a podcast, and now it's like, well, you can't hire that guy. And it's like, or you can just not watch the show, not support the show, don't support their advertisers, or we can have him taken off the show for something. Yeah, it, it's ago. swinging. It, it's swinging back. Yeah, we're coming back. But um, the real key, the, uh, and and I mean it. It's it's all it's all the it's all the apologizing. The, the the problem the problem is if I want you to apologize because you've truly hurt me and I'm I'm legitimately sort of effed up by you know we have a relationship mm-hmm. or I have I'm proud of my Italian heritage or whatever it is and like I I really want you to apologize to fix what is what you broke in me then that can be satiated. I mean, we've all had relationships where friends, family, whatever, like stuff went a little south and he just went, I'm sorry. And they went, I accept and, and we move on. But that's not the goal. The goal is I move forward. You move back. Right. And I'm going to keep going. So you apologize. And by the way, I'm upset, not even on my behalf. I'm up for, first off, I'm upset for other people mm-hmm. and cultures that I'm not involved in and don't share right. their cultures. So that's how, you know, right off the bat. They don't care about your apology. They're doing it on behalf of everyone. They're moving forward. You're moving back. You can apologize all you want. They will keep moving forward. The notion, the misnomer is, I'll apologize, and then they'll stop moving forward. No, they will not. Quite the opposite. They will be emboldened by it, and they will pick it up. So that's why there's been more apologizing and more. it's, It's like, it's like. The more sexual harassment seminars we have, the more sexual harassment cases are right. filed. We think we're going to have a seminar, do away with sexual harassment. Oh, contraire. We'll have more. That's the way we work. Yeah. So you tell these fuck faces to shut up yeah. and they stop or they go somewhere else where they can find it. Right. Where somebody will tolerate and put up with the bullying. Well, you, you yeah, know, they want an apology. If you won't give it to them, they'll go somewhere else and find it. Have you ever heard of a writer named Walter Mosley? No. Very or famous maybe. black writer. And uh, he wrote Devil in a Blue Dress that they made the mm-hmm. movie into. And he was writing on a TV show, on a drama, which was really like a step down. But for whatever reason, he wanted to write on dramas. Right. And so uh, he's in the writer's room and he's telling the story. And it's a show about race. And there you go. And so. He used the N-word, but he used it in the context of saying, I was talking to a police officer who said, when I go to a black neighborhood, when I go to an N-word neighborhood and I right. see a white person, I question them. Right. And when I go to a white neighborhood and I see an N-word, I question him. And he goes, and he goes that's the kind of thing I've been exposed to. My-. Somebody goes to Human Resources, a white person, and ah. said, I was offended by this. Human uh. Resources calls him in and warns him that he'll oh be fired. And he goes, I am the N-word in the room. <laughs> And so he goes, fuck you, I'm and he quit. I'm sorry I laughed over that, Brian. What did he say? <laughs> he said, fuck you, and he quit. No, what did he say before b- that? To HR? What, what did he no, say? When I they am said the what? you can't use that word. He said what to them? He said, I'm the N word. Thank, Thank you. you. There you go. Now, <laughs> I, this, is, this is. All right, I got you. Uh, this I is insane. You. Set me I, up. Obviously, <laughs> I, this. Uh, we are, we are now. Uh, first off, who is the person that goes to HR? And then poor HR goes. Well, we have to do something. Right. Like yeah. the paperwork out. Who the yeah. fuck are these people? Yeah. Who are they? Why is it so? Why does it feel good to them or satisfying or anything? Write a fucking funny script yeah. or write a dramatic script. Either way, mm-hmm. make your bosses happy. Don't report people. And yes, this is Papa John. I was going to say, you got Papa John's. Papa John was <laughs> like, "Hey, listen, I, I'm getting in trouble for doing X, Y, and Z." Colonel Sanders used the N word. To it's like publicist fix it guy. And the publicist fix it guy ratted him out. Yeah. Like, our first things first. 
if you are reporting what people said, that's not you saying it. No. You know, me saying there's using the N word and there's saying the N word. They're very different things. There's also me saying, here's what happened in the Holocaust versus me being involved in the Holocaust. Yeah. I, one thing is something that happened. I think we're allowed to report it. Yeah. I, I don't. How we tell stories. Okay, sorry. It drives me nuts. Anyway, swinging back. And mm-hmm. speaking of what you said about the, you know, I'm going to be offended on your behalf, that just reminded me. Remember when a few years ago all the Moana costumes got pulled off the shelves? Right. Um, because, you know, it's Hawaiian culture, Pacific Islander, whatever. And we had a guy call in saying, you know what? This was going to be the first year my daughter was represented and would have she would have gotten to wear a costume from her culture. But because all these white people got mad, now she doesn't get that costume. Well, now there's a Dia de los Muertos Barbie with the face painting and all the cool stuff. And they sold out quickly. And now everyone's crying cultural appropriation. But don't people of Hispanic descent get to have their Barbie, too? Or do we take it away from them because... They they can't be trusted to make their own decisions. Well, they play with our Barbies when they're cleaning our house. So oh, okay. I, in a way, they can use our Thank Barbie. Thank you for helping me make my point. Okay. Let me say something, and I'll be loud and fucking clear. Um, I have lived in many houses with many crazy neighbors. <laughs> These people, like who's the person who goes to human resources and rats out this black Uh, drama writer. I've lived next door to a lot of these people. And it was funny. I was moving and I was talking to uh, Olga, my Guatemalan nanny. And and it's like we have the neighbor and the neighbor is crazy. Like the neighbor just like would yell at Chris Maxipata for parking his car in front and yell at Chris, yell at Olga. Olga parked her RAV4 in front of her house at the curb, you know, legally. It's a public street. And she'd come out and yell at her. Olga said, she did it once, and then the second time I did it, I just said, hey, fuck off. And then she got left alone. And I had a crazy cunt of a neighbor when I lived up in the Hollywood Hills. And at first, it was like, well, this is my neighbor, you know, and I, I'd like to be copacetic. And they started saying things, and they, they just kept going and going. And at a certain point, she'd, like, come down the hill to start, and i go, hey, fuck off. Get the fuck away from me, bitch. And she'd just go back in her house and shut the door. And it's like, I never heard from her again. Sadly... The only way to get rid of these people is to tell Olga said, fuck you, and she never bothered her again. It's the same way with the fucking yeah. woke culture. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. And they don't know what to do because they don't have a point and they're pussies. They can't beat you up and they don't really have a point of Moana or whatever. What the fuck is your point? Someone tell these people to shut the fuck up. It's the only thing that'll cure this. When I lived in Boston, there was a, I lived on the third floor and on the second floor was this Russian guy. And he was like an engineer and this, this carload of geeks would pull up, all these engineers, and they would – and I'm a comedian. I'm getting home at 3 in the morning and they'd show up at 7 a.m. and they would honk twice – for him to come down. And so I went downstairs. So I go, hey, do me a favor. I don't wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Could you not honk? Uh, I don't understand the English. Uh, I don't know why he had a Spanish accent. And so, uh, and so they pulled up one morning and they honked. And I was ready. And I had a dozen eggs. And I unleashed a dozen. Not one. Not two. A dozen eggs on the car. Wow. Guess what? Never honked again. Yeah. Good. Sad. Sadly. But it works. And... Uh, Olga, again, when, when I always love the story. Like when we go out of town, <laughs> Olga just stays in our house, sleeps on our bed, and Phil, 110 pound lab, sleeps on her. And uh, like Lynette will go, how do you? How do you like it when Phil wakes you up at 5.30 in the morning and has to go outside and take a pee? And Olga goes, I don't get up at 5.30 in the morning. He goes, yeah, but doesn't Phil paw you at 5.30 in the morning and drag you out of the house? And she goes, yeah, but I kick him in the ribs. <laughs> But what about the next? He doesn't do it anymore. It's like, oh, okay. I guess that's how it works, right? That's it. All right. Let's do one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, Pinterest has published a list of its most popular Halloween-related searches on its platform between July uh, 2018 and July 2019 and found that among the people who are planning to go to Halloween parties, one particular person has skyrocketed 442% Oh, Epstein. (laughs) It didn't make it onto the Pinterest board. Oh. It comes with the rope. Yeah. All right. All right. 
Although I am listening to a new podcast about him called Broken. So a mother's nightmare. Num- yeah, it is every- a mother's nightmare. <laughs> it's always a mother's nightmare. Uh, so I'll give you a hint. Uh, I'm going to write a best-selling book that's 386 <laughs> empty pages. There's no words on them, but the title's called A Mother's Nightmare. I'll make up some chick's name. The Abduction. Caitlin. Of Caitlin McDougal. Yeah, that's A good. Mother's <laughs> Nightmare, and I'm just going to sell a million yeah. copies yeah. What's on the Amazon. What's on the cover? Uh, the it's, silhouette of a little girl. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a doll that's fallen off yes. a miniature chair. Yeah, right. But the chair's miniature, but the dolls <laughs> fell right. off it. It's she, a swing, and it's it's on the rise, but it's empty. Yeah. It's empty. Yeah. That's right. It's a, it's a ball bouncing into the street with yeah. nobody to chase it. <laughs> yeah. A mother's nightmare. <laughs> I'm going to sell a billion copies. You will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll buy one. Mm-hmm. Buy two. Mm-hmm. So this person has uh, has launched up to the top of Pinterest 442%. Is a real person or a fictional character? Real person. Uh, I'll make it easy on you. Uh, recently, a movie made about this person. Antonio Brown's trainer. <clears throat> yes. Uh-huh. Uh, that person is that every avoid this Halloween costume because oh, apparently everybody's going to do it. Yes, oh, yeah. oh. Elton John, uh, Rocket Man, of course, came out recently. He had uh, the movie. He had his sequin Dodger baseball uniform, that, a shiny that gold sounds feather like a jacket. Cal- that sounds like a calorie burn. Yeah. Man. Oh my god. Like, you wear the heels and the glasses. You gotta go to the those, craft store. The wings. I'm, I'm looking for the least amount of. I mean, I literally once me and Kevin Hanch. <laughs> went to Zanku Chicken employees oh. because I was just like we're at Zanku Chicken. I was like, when's Halloween? It's like two days. You guys sell T-shirts? <laughs> like, yeah, okay, right. good. Done. Here we're we on. are. We work at Zanku. Right. We wear a T-shirt. The Trader Joe's costume is also a crowd pleaser. <clears throat> and by the way, Hawaiian it's not shirt. like you can't wear the Zanku Chicken. You know, mm. mid mid year, like it's sure. fine. It's right. It's still a T-shirt. I yeah. imagine the answer is no. But <clears throat> Greg Fitzsimmons, you ever do the uh, th- the the family themed? You know what I mean? Costumes with the kids and the wife. No, uh, we, I can't even get the Christmas picture. We try to do that for the Christmas picture, and it, it's a <laughs> fucking nightmare. Mm. You know, mm. we can't do things as a family. We do. It, we're great individual athletes, mm. but we're not, not a, team a team sport. sport. No, yeah, Tessa me wants neither. to be Cindy Lou Who. She wants me to be the Grinch. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to file that under the festive socks you wear <laughs> as things I that we'll never do. I already have the Grinch costume, so I might as well do it. Yeah, no, it's, I, I listen. I, there again. <laughs> I, I, there are things that I admire that I would never participate in, but I, I, I admire. I admire them. Yeah. yeah. This I, is one of them. This is, this is one of them. Yeah. 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 Uh, by the way, another one that shot up 145%. This might be more your speed item because this costume is really on the other side of the spectrum when you're talking about dead rock stars who had biopics. <clears throat> Freddie Mercury. Yeah. A mm. mustache and a tank top. Sure. And maybe a, a cufflet. T- tight jeans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be room for the dude who works out a lot and yeah. looks good mm-hmm. and is slim. Like the biggest cop out douche one ever. Ever see the dude who lives in the gym and then for Halloween he goes as the baby. baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's just him in a diaper. And a and he's got his little thing. And, okay, it's, it's, and he's he used to show off the pecs and the lats, right? Right. Like, and you can is, also shit your pants at the party. That's which true. <laughs> What burns that guy? Is every once in a while, I have no idea. <laughs> every like fifth Halloween, it is fucking cold out on that patio yeah, where yeah. the keg is. That yeah. guy suffers. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, Worth it. Good. let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. I am the N word in the room. <laughs> Gina, Gina. Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Worth it.